What's up everybody, Brant Phillips with Real Estate Fundamentals. So today I want to talk to you and help you answer a question and that question is, should you quit your job and go into real estate full time? Should you do it full time? So let's just start with what does a job mean, right? For most people, this may not apply to you, but for most people, it stands for, you know, just over broke. J-O-B, just over broke. So if you're starting from that place, right, I'm gonna make a very, very compelling argument that's going to probably steer you into quitting your job and going full time if you can check a few boxes of the things I'm gonna talk about here. Um, but if you are in a situation where you've got a good job and life's pretty good, and you know you don't hate what you do for a living like i said the income is good you know you've got a couple of kids and you're taking a vacation or two a year and you live middle upper class i'm going to warn you right now you are going to have a more difficult time escaping from that rat race and escaping that good life to make it to a great life a lot of the people that i see that are able to make that leap from you know, leaving their job and going full time are usually people, honestly, that are were a lot like me or are a lot like me and like that I was because when I was working my corporate job, I was absolutely miserable. I was absolutely just over broke. And so for me, it was really, really easy to to make that transition to going full time. So what I want to what I want to do, though, in this video is give you some give you some things to think about, give you some things to consider, give you some context and and some things, some ways to analyze your situation and whether or not you should go full time into real estate or real estate investing. All right, so let's look at this from a business perspective. Very simple, risk versus reward, okay? What, what is the risk that you may be taking by leaving your job and what is the reward okay and then we're gonna look at this also we're gonna look at this through kind of a risk lens right like risk of one five to ten right and the risk and the reward and then also we want to look at you know short term short term versus long term okay so let's just talk about this so one first and foremost any you know business transaction any real estate deal that you're working on you know you should be looking at that with everything that you do right a risk first reward type of, uh, of analysis cost analysis and sometimes it's not a cost of your money it's a cost of your time and so the position that I was in just to give you guys kind of a brief summary of where I was at I began investing in real estate and you know I did 10 deals my first year I did 10 deals my second year while working my full-time corporate job and I worked long hard hours there were some there was some flexibility in it because I was in outside sales uh, but I worked long and hard I had to hit my numbers and I always hit my numbers but you know for me where I was coming from was the one it was it was just there wasn't a lot of upside with that company unless I was willing to put in like a 10 or 15 20 year grind that's what I was seeing from guys who were climbing the corporate ladder and I didn't desire to do that okay so when I began looking at my risks and analyzing my situation you know it started even before that in terms of when I really started contemplating leaving my job, which uh, was in year one, when I started thinking about it, I started building a plan. Like, hey, what are my risks here? What are my uh, liabilities? So I started looking at from a personal level, right? And my wife and I had recently gone through like this Dave Ramsey thing. So we had eliminated a lot of our bad debt, our liabilities, a lot of our, my personal risks with the exception of a mortgage and we had one car payment. Okay, we had some, um, you know, monthly expenses, obviously, but I had, we had done a good job of setting our, ourselves in the position to eliminate personal risks. Then I started looking at business risks. What were the risks of real estate? So one, if you, uh, you know, follow me or watch my channel, hear me talk a lot about sustainability. So were there risks in the real estate market? Absolutely. But I felt like I had a pretty solid business plan 
of investing in affordable housing and investing sustainably with rental properties, investing for cash flow, and I later began flipping and doing other things to generate you know bigger uh, paydays in my business. But for the most part, I had a good you know risk uh, mitigation plan, right? Like there wasn't I wasn't doing a very high risk. Uh, type of investing. Another thing that I did that that helped me eliminate my risk is I went and got my realtor license in 2009, right before I quit my job. And that was kind of a last kind of thing when I was analyzing everything. I'm like, all right, I've got these rentals going on now. I had like 20, 25 rentals. I had began to flip. I'm like, what else can I do to safeguard my position? And so I went and got my realtor's license as a hedge against everything else. Uh, failing, so to speak. So I looked at my risk from a personal side of view and um, an investment side of view, and and you know I really determined you know there's not a lot of risk here. The the risk for me really was I may not have enough money some months, you know, that I may not be able to pay the bills, and that was really really scary to me. Okay, that was really really scary to me. To you know, my wife and I had came from a place where we were broke a lot all the time right and we had credit cards and we had bills and it was you know trying to pinch pennies figuring out how to make things work i didn't want to go back to that place obviously but i had worked through it all where i had mitigated those risks and now what i had to do and what i encourage you to do is look at all the risks that you could see in your business and in in your personal situation short term and long term right and then weigh that versus the reward and to me the risk were not insignificant but they were like a low two or low three okay so if I was rating my my risk I would say you know I was at a three of risk where things could go wrong the market could even get worse because I, I you know started doing this 2007 2008 the crash came I was contemplating quitting my job the beginning of 2009, which I did the first quarter of 2009. I'm like, real estate market's probably not gonna get much worse, right? So my risk was very low. And I started looking at the reward, okay? Looking at the upside on the potential of what was possible in terms of creating wealth, in terms of creating cash flow. And it was very simple, and this is what I find most times is you know my reward was off the charts it was like a 10 plus 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 okay so you've got to look the risk versus reward um, ratio of your investments your personal situation versus what is the reward and I started looking at the reward not only uh, financial and that was actually less important to me than the personal okay this was huge for me because I was at a place where I was, like I said, I was working really long, hard hours um, at a job I really just, I, I didn't like. You know, I don't wanna say it, the word hate because I was grateful for it, was paying my bills and things like that. But I, I like, I hated it. I'm not gonna lie, like getting up on a daily basis, I had to look at myself in the mirror like, what in the, what in the world am I doing here? So for me, when I looked at my risk first reward, you know, for me, number one, the, the number one goal of, of the reward was creating, you know, freedom of my time, the ability to wake up in the morning and enjoy what I was doing for, for a living. So that was number one. Number two was really like a cash flow play, like meaning, you know, meeting and seeing my bills and kind of creating kind of a lifestyle where we could uh, vacation more frequently, take some travel. And then, then the last thing was, not the last thing, but the next thing was creating wealth and then also creating, you know, really this kind of hierarchy of needs kind of thing where we start making, uh, to start making an impact, creating a legacy, helping others. So this was really big. And that really, you know, financial uh, wealth creation and legacy were, to summarize, those were all things that, that I was looking at. You know, financial was number two, meeting, seeing my bills, taking some vacations, creating wealth, and then ultimately I wanted to create a, a legacy. So when I looked at my risk versus reward factor, short-term risk, long-term risk, short-term you know, rewards, long-term rewards, it was like a no-brainer, right? And so I encourage you to go through a similar process. Another thing that I looked at um, was kind of the, the happiness factor, okay? And I've kind of already hit on this a little bit, 
but you know whenever I, I looked at you know my uh, enjoyment of life and what I was doing versus my enjoyment of what I would be doing full time because I was doing it part time uh, at that time it was like once again I was like a one currently where I was at you know with my job and what I was doing with my life like it sucked and I did not like it and I'm like the the future of doing real estate full time and controlling my time and creating more in, income streams, growing my income, being my own boss, creating a legacy, helping others is like it was off the charts. So look at where you're at on a happiness factor. This is where, once again, this is where we hear so many stories of the the person who was broke, lost it all, living on the streets went on to become a billionaire, right? Or multi, multi, multi millionaires because they had nothing to lose. They played all in where a lot of people have the problem um, determining whether or not they should go full time. They get stuck. They get stuck right here at this five where they're like, man, I've got a good job. I kind of like it. It's not too bad. You know, pays pretty, you know, I don't hate it that much. I kind of enjoy it sometimes and things like that. They get stuck in this good life, right? So when we get over here, it's bad, right? This is like bad. It's like frowny face. This is like the mild face. You know, it's kind of like you're just like whatever, although it looks kind of frown. And then over here is like, heck yeah, like life's great. You get stuck in this good place and it's hard to break away um, to the great. So look at your risks, look at your happiness, and then a couple of other things. I actually got this from reading Rocket Fuel recently, uh, going in between, you know, relationship between a visionary and an integrator. I'm working with my COO on some other things you need to think about, though, right? So this is kind of kind of fluff, fluffy kind of things like risk and, and rewards. Not too fluffy, but getting into the happiness factor, creating legacy, and all that kind of stuff, but. You gotta figure out, can you can you pay the bills, right? And so when you break free of your job, this is something that I grossly underestimated was all this influx of time, right? And so, you know, I was able to quickly double and triple my income just because I had time, right? And so what, what I, I wanna give you a couple of things to look at, um, uh, things, to look at before you quit okay so here's some things um, that you just got to really have an honest conversation with yourself and, and your partner perhaps um, but your financial readiness okay um, you got to have you got to have some reserves you know I don't know how many you know how much in reserves you need to have put away I know a good roll of thumb you know for a household is you know three to six months um, I would I would encourage you to get close to the six months uh, business a good three months of of, um, of reserves right that you've got your you you know whether you have office marketing all that kind of stuff um, most of you guys if you're just solopreneurs you're not gonna have an office space um, but make sure you've got you know your salary so to speak to pay the bills that you've got your marketing uh, budget to foreign things like that but you got you got to make sure you're you're financially ready uh, to execute you know your one two three year plan at your current role and you've set yourself up to this point meaning basically you want to have some traction going into this it's not that you just attend a boot camp and you're like hey I'm gonna quit my job and go become a millionaire this year it's not gonna happen so make sure that you're prepared financially um, psychologically Psycholo if I could spell um, psychologically prepared okay um, when I left my full-time job it wasn't the greatest job in the world um, I wasn't making that much money but I was making money and I knew you know every two weeks I've had money that was gonna be you know ACH into my account I knew that my medical was taken care of and I actually had a, a company car, a corporate car. So I didn't have to worry about that. I didn't have to worry about insurance and that kind of stuff on my car or medical. So for me, being becoming psychologically prepared to handle some of the financial pressure 
of walking away from a paycheck and I had a growing family, I had bills to pay, walk away from that, to walk away from my medical being paid, to be walk away from you know a corporate car to where I had to go buy a truck and I had to go get medical insurance. That was a big one. So make sure that you're psychologically prepared for the changes that are going to take place. Um, structurally, be structurally uh, prepared. What do I mean by that? This is once again, like I mentioned, you're not going to roll out of some boot camp and be brand new to real estate and just you know build like a you know seven figure business. You need to make sure that you've got structures in place, marketing, sales, you know, capital, whether with private lenders or banks or hard money lenders, you know, fulfillment, contractors, that kind of thing. If you're fixing and flipping, you need to be structurally prepared in your business, meaning you don't want to quit your job and go and start building systems. You already want to have systems uh, in place. Okay, you want to have systems in place, and these are some things. Um, that you really need to look at before you make that that final leap. And then I think the last thing that I would also share with you is if you're going this far, if you're on the verge of quitting your job and going full time, make it like, you know, aim for, I'm gonna say aim uh, for, uh, you know, 100% success, meaning I see people, they either failure to launch, like they almost get there and then they don't pull the trigger, or they're not prepared enough, like hence see these three things. They're not prepared enough and they fire too quickly and they end up not making it. So aim for 100% success, okay? Meaning do all these things. Set yourself up and then go all in. Set yourself up so that you can thrive, that you can operate, you know, in uh, Dan Sullivan calls it your unique ability to just to thrive and do what you do best, provide value to the marketplace and make it a success. So that's it guys. Like this, it came up uh, a week or two ago when, you know, someone asked me about, hey man, should I quit my job? Should I go full time? Like it's not an easy question to unravel. There's a lot of layers to this onion, but if you're going down that path, take some time with this. You know, Look at your risk, look at your rewards, short-term, long-term. What are your short and long-term goals? How can you meet them? For some people, it means they stay at their job another year, or two years, three years, four years, whatever it is. For me, that just wasn't an option. I needed to make this happen as quickly as possible. So I, I burned the light at both candles and worked my tail off for a little over two years, but I made sure that I was financially ready. I was somewhat psychologically prepared. It's kind of like having a kid, like there's never like a perfect time. You just make a decision like, hey, we're gonna have a kid and you just do it. Um, or sometimes you don't decide and you just do it. Um, and that you're structurally prepared. You've got some systems built so you can go out and attack the marketplace and then just go all in. Like, don't make any compromises. Forget about a plan B. You make a plan A and you go out and attack it, guys. So anyways, I hope that helps. If you're on this journey of contemplating quitting your job, going full time, I uh, hope this helps. Give me some comments. Give me some likes. Give me some feedback. If you've got questions, I'll do my best to respond to you guys. Hope that helps. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And we'll talk to you next time on the next video at Real Estate Fundamentals with Brant Phillips.